Adulthood is filled with tough choices, deciding where to live, who to live with, and which Audi large crossover to buy, the SQ8 or the refreshed Q7. This dilemma was presented in the scenic Wasatch Mountain Range near Salt Lake City. The updates to Audi's latest models are subtle. A refreshed front end, customizable light signatures, new digital cockpit themes, and the return of exposed tailpipes on the more family-oriented Q7 three-row SUV. The updates are also staggered. While the refresh technically applies to the 2024 Q8 and SQ8, it's also being rolled out to the 2025 Audi Q7 and SQ7. Since 2024 is winding down and the 2025 models are arriving imminently, Audi recommended treating both as 2025 models with only a minor price adjustment. The last time Audi launched its largest crossovers, the world was in the throes of the pandemic and the experience was virtual. Now, it's a hands-on, visceral encounter. Driving the 500-horsepower twin-turbo 4.0-liter V8 SQ8 can make all those tough adult decisions feel worthwhile. It's an exhilarating drive. The SQ8, the performance pinnacle of Audi's crossover lineup, remains as impressive as ever, even with the RSQ8 arriving early next year. The RSQ8's V8 will be tuned to 631 horsepower and 627 lbft of torque, making this cousin of the Lamborghini Urus the most powerful production engine in Audi's lineup. Audi is targeting a 0 to 60 miles per hour time of just 3.4 seconds. It's hard to imagine how much more effortless that will feel compared to the SQ8's V8, which produces 568 lbft of torque. From a standstill, it takes a moment to unleash all that power. But reaching triple-digit speeds on the long on-ramp outside Park City happens almost too easily. For quicker acceleration, disengage stability control, press the brake, floor the throttle, release the brake, and launch. It feels faster than its quoted 4.0 second 0 to 60 miles per hour time, a claim supported by many independent tests. The 8-speed automatic transmission shifts with the smoothness of an Olympic swimmer. While the paddle shifters are fun to use, they're not essential. In dynamic mode, the transmission allows you to push the engine to the 6,800 RPM redline before shifting. The turbo's whine complements the V8's throaty rumble, and while some electric vehicles might launch with more thrust, the V8 still has a way of stirring the soul. The true allure of the SQ8 and SQ7 shines when you're out on the open road, not just from a standstill. Around the 2,500 RPM mark, the surge of power is enough to bring a grin, or even a giggle, as you downshift using the perfectly sized paddle shifters mounted on the steering wheel. This power makes passing on single-lane highways feel like you're driving a sports car. Equally impressive is how smoothly these SUVs transition into quiet, serene cruising for relaxed highway drives. The duality of their character is truly delightful. Contributing to this quiet ride is the acoustic glass on the side windows, which is part of the Prestige trim package available for an additional $7,000, bringing the base price of the SQ8 to $97,795, including destination. A quick note on features, all Q7S and Q8S come with all-wheel drive, while rear-wheel steering is optional on the Q7-Q8 but standard on the SQ models. All four models I tested were equipped with this technology. The rear wheels turn in the opposite direction to the front wheels at speeds below 37 miles per hour, effectively shortening the wheelbase and reducing the turning radius by 3.3 feet. This allowed me to execute a U-turn on a narrow access road without needing to shift into reverse, and it makes parking much easier. At higher speeds, the rear wheels turn in the same direction as the front wheels, which significantly enhances agility on the winding roads of the Wasatch Range. The Continental Sport Contact 285-35 are 23 summer tires on the SQ models I tested played a key role, but other advanced technologies also contributed to their performance around blind corners and steep drop-offs. Both the SQ8 and SQ7 I drove were equipped with the optional $6,000 S-Sport package, which includes an electromechanical limited slip rear differential. This system directs more torque to the outside rear wheel for better grip and helps the vehicle rotate more effectively when navigating the twists and turns of mountain roads. The package also features two anti-roll bars, one at the front and one at the rear, each with a motor in the center that effectively splits the stabilizer bar into two. On uneven surfaces, where one side of the road might crumble into gravel, 
The system allows the passenger side to flex more while keeping the driver's side firm on solid ground. On smooth pavement and during spirited driving, the two halves of each roll bar rotate in opposite directions to counteract body roll and maintain stability at each wheel. The result was excellent grip at speeds defying the SQ8's 5,214-pound curb weight. It drove more like an Avant wagon. The SQ8 shredded all destination estimates and blurred the beautiful mountain scenery. In a lesser car, I would have stopped to take it all in. In the SQ8, I wanted more canyons to carve. The testers also came with an air suspension and adaptive dampers that's standard on the Q7-Q8 Prestige and the SQ8-SQ7. The delta in the air suspension is only 30 millimeters, or 1.2 inches, so it can get to nearly 10 inches of ground clearance in off-road mode, but a gravelly access road should be the end of your off-road intentions. Everything in the SQ models felt more tightly wound, sport-tuned suspension, bolstered bucket seats, and steering. As much as I love the chunky steering wheel, the steering seemed to stray from center more than in the Q7-Q8, but the sensitive inputs matched the SQ's attitude. Since the four models tested were equipped similarly, aside from the $6,000 S-Sport package exclusively available on the SQ models, that twin-turbo V8 becomes about a $24,000 question over the Q7-Q8 TFSI 55. The V6 was pleasing in its own way, but if you're going to upgrade with the rear axle steering and air suspension, get the V8. While the SQ7 rivals the 0 to 60 miles per hour times of the Rivian R1S and Tesla Model X, and even the Dodge Durango SRT, I haven't driven a better handling three-row SUV when properly equipped at $116,540 in my tester's case. If you want the performance, but need the limited use third row, it's a tough call here. The Q8 has better legroom and back, but the Q7 has better headroom. The Q7's third row only adds 77 pounds, yet the sexier roofline of the Q8 adds $9,000 to the TFSI 55 and about $7,000 to the SQ8. That alone might lead some shoppers to pick the Q7, even if the third row is more circumstantial than practical. The Q7's second row seats split 35 hours, 30 minutes, and 35 seconds, but the middle section doesn't flip forward out of the way, it just folds flat. Stick the Surly Teen in the third row, and it can become a leg rest, but the passengers in the outboard seats might not appreciate it. The third row power folds down from the door or cargo area, but the second row is a manual fold then flip. If heads fit in the third row, toes might not, at least not without some negotiations with the second row. It's more cumbersome and cramped than other luxury three-row SUVs, ranging from the BMW X7 and Mercedes-Benz GLE to the Rivian R1S. One note for front passengers with the massaging seat option. You don't need to use the touchscreen. Press and hold the center button on the seat side control panel to activate. It's a nice convenience. Revisiting these most important models in the US market reminded me how good the in-car technology is, even if the Apple CarPlay connection opens up the tech gremlins. Several times, and with several other journalists, connecting with a wire to ACP resulted in my home screen.